John here guys and today we're going to be talking about how this 3 inch Diatone 339 Cube compares against a 5 inch racing quad on a track. Now every time one of these little micros comes out that is really fast, first thing I think of is how would this thing do on a track? Could we build an indoor track and race these? Could we do spec racing and race one of these? And we're going to talk about all of those things in a few minutes now this is <laughs> the raging drone five inch that i built up in order to review the heli nation talent stack and it is extremely fast but any five inch quad is extremely fast these days what we really want to know is can a small three inch like this keep up with it now i've already tested in the past the diatone gtr 349 and whether that can hold up on the track and it's no surprise that it could because that thing can go 117 miles per hour on 4s but these little 65 gram cubes are not nearly as fast now it does still spin a three inch prop but how's it gonna perform how's it going to compare it's good well the answer is quite well quite favorably and here are some notes about how it compares um, I built up two different tracks in order to test this and flow it, flew it against two different five inch quads. Um, I built one tighter track with some quadriction style soccer gates and then I also um, flew it on a slightly larger track. Uh, not super large but it had a couple of good punch outs to see one with the battery life, life uh, allow it to last two minutes and two just how far behind would it fall in those and I also tried to do a couple of power moves so some mats boobs some corkscrews to see can this really do all of the moves that a five inch can and it did it did everything that I threw at it without any problems now I couldn't quite get the camera angle just right I think I needed to raise it just a little bit more um, because of the power to weight ratio of these tiny things any I got a few of these bobbles, you know, especially in the slower areas when I'm taking off. And that's just because there's so much power when you put that throttle. I couldn't keep it kind of nice and low, but with some practice, I could get that. I mean, I only tried about six or seven packs on these tracks, maybe eight. And the other notes were on the first day, I was actually using a little um, immersion RC puck to time the laps. On a five inch, I was able to get times that were about, the fastest lap of the day was 15 and a half seconds or so. The fastest lap of this thing was about 17 and a half or closer to 17 flat. So that means that it is just a little bit slower, but it's definitely in the ballpark. Now that day I only tried this four packs and this five inch more like 12 packs. So with a little more practice, I could probably uh, reduce that gap down to about one second so that's totally serviceable and so why would you ever want to race one of these things must go faster well, a couple of reasons maybe you wanted to set up an indoor track maybe you wanted to set up a smaller track than normal didn't have enough space and you wanted to maybe you were somewhere that was closer than you would like to have a five inch race or maybe you wanted to do some spec racing now, what is spec racing? Spec racing is something like DRL. Every person racing is racing with the exact same equipment, the same frame, motors, camera, everything, props. And MultiGP has a spec racing list of components that you can buy, but the thing that I don't like about that is that they're so old. Why are you bringing up old shit? That it's like, why would you want to buy all that junk if you can even still find it, put it together, and you have an outdated quad to fly for anything other than spec racing? Um, I think that spec racing should be kind of set to the buy and fly market because you can buy one cheap every year if they change the model every year. And if you do the spec racing on more of the micro scene, now you have a craft that can do things that your five inch can't, like fly, fly from your driveway and also very small weight also a good way to kind of get beginners in the scene 
um, because we'll have a set of components that are similar all across the board. Another candidate that I've really been thinking of for spec racing would be the Baby Hawk R 4 inch Pro. This thing is very well built, very good components in here. I'm using this same 6S stack on a lot of my 5 inch quads that I race with, uh, although this is meant for 4S, but RC Attic proved that you can run this thing on a 6S battery. This is much closer in speed and performance and handling to a 5 inch. Given that's a four inch, you know, that's not really a surprise, but some serious racers may prefer this over this. And the reason for that is a lot of the top racers that I know don't like to fly anything that's too different from their five inch setup. They don't want to ruin that muscle memory that they train day in and day out to develop. And when you have things like this that need a little bit more yaw, a little bit more roll, or a little bit whatever, they handle a little bit differently, it can kind of mess that stuff up. That's also why a lot of racers prefer to practice in Velocidrone because the physics are just a tad better, even though I prefer a lot of the gaming aspects of liftoff. So, spec racing, which one would you guys pick? This is $180, this is $130 but there's some serious sales going on for this thing. I've seen it as low as $135 this week. Um, and I've seen this as low as 110, 120. So that to me is a little bit more attractive. Um, if you go all the way small, like I said, you have a dual purpose thing that you can fly on your own in other places that you could not fly your five inch. Not so much with this one because it is so fast. You can't really fly it in too many places that you wouldn't want to take a uh, full-size quad. Um, we have held indoor races in my chapter before. We did one a couple years ago at an indoor soccer stadium and we found that the size and the weight and the speed of even an old school three inch which was your older recipe which is a lot faster was very difficult. This scales it down. This is not going to be going 100 miles an hour. It's very very light and maneuverable and you don't have to worry about hitting things so if someone did allow you to race in some sort of an indoor facility, whether it's a garage, a warehouse, whatever. You don't really have to worry about this doing damage to any walls because of how light it is. I also did take a midair with this thing against uh, El Profe. Miguel was trying out his new uh, frame that he designed himself and built up and it was doing testing that day. And he was on the track with me and boom, got knocked out of the air. And I thought for sure, okay, that thing's toast. Uh, the frame's probably broken, the canopy's probably broken, and took it like a champ, guys. It also took a few gate hits, and this frame held up no problem. See, the way that it has everything reinforced, like this design is very strong. And because of the light weight, it's not really going to put a tremendous amount of force when it does take a hit. So, very impressed with this thing. What do you guys think in the comments if you did want to do micro racing or spec racing? Which of these do you prefer? Or if there's another model that you have in mind, would you like for spec racing to be weight or component based? Or would you just say screw spec racing altogether? Let's just do micro racing. And if you were going to do micro racing, would you set a prop size limit? Would you set a battery size limit? Would you set a late weight limit? It's really hard when you start thinking about it because if you say three inch, well, this three inch is going to be much slower than like, uh, a more traditional three inch with like 1408 motors. So you have to get people on the same playing field or else it's just going to be ridiculous. Uh, so how do you do it guys? I can't wait to get some micro racing going. These things are a lot of fun. The other side to that coin though, is if you are going to take the time to set up a track and you do have the space, is there any reason to race these versus five inch? I mean, these motors are not really going to take a hit as well. I didn't have any troubles with the few bangs that I took, but if you did hit it just right, the motor would definitely not survive. Um, a lot of your five inch frames have motor protection out on the ends of the arms. This particular frame has no more motor protection to speak of. The Baby Hawk R does have some motor protection on there, but even with that, if you're going full tilt like this, it doesn't matter what sticks out on the arm, you're still going to hit the motor bell and it's going to be toast. So what do you think? Thanks, guys.